Hey, welcome. My name is Michael Nevins, and I'm going to talk to you about how I built my Lightboard Studio. In this video, I'll give some introduction for the materials I needed to buy, then I'll back up and give you a view of the whole studio, the setup that I have, and at the end I'll come back and just talk about some tips and tricks I found throughout the process. All right, let's start the conversation with what I think are the must-have list of things that you need to build a Lightboard Studio. I'll talk about why and then also kind of the iteration I went through with any of these where I tried something, spent some money, and it didn't work to hopefully save you time and money in the future. The absolute first thing is a piece of plexiglass. I bought this four by eight sheet of plexiglass from Home Depot at a cost of about $250. And this is one of the things that I've absolutely not had to replace. The, I have gotten little nicks and scratches in my pieces of plexiglass, but it hasn't actually shown up on video. And actually when I get to the polarized filter, I'll talk more about that. Second is the lighting. This is one thing I didn't appreciate in the beginning, but especially if you want to adjust the color when you're processing these videos, having really good lighting in the right areas is really important and learning how to use the lighting. For me, my key light's over there. So I'm always trying to kind of keep my face a little bit pointed that way when I'm looking straight ahead. And the reasoning is because the shadows that form that I'm sure you can see as you're looking at this. I have another light over here and this is the fill, vid the fill light. And that's trying to kind of neutralize some of those shadows. And I also have a third light up here that's called a hair light that tries to make it so you can see clearly the top of my head. That said, I bought all my lighting from B&H Video and Photography Online. Um, and the range was the first set of two softbox lightings that I, that I bought was about $150. The newer LED ones that I'm now using were about $250. So generally, I would say that the price for this, the, the basic you would need is spend about $125, $150. And you can spend, I mean, there's professional sets that go all the way up to $600. I'm not cool enough to know how to use a $600 setup any better than a cheaper one, but I would say around $200 is the way to go. Next up is the LED strip that goes around the light board. Um, this doesn't need to be a really big cost. I think the one I have, because I need it to go all the way around the plexiglass, this cost about $50 and I bought it from Amazon. Then the framing, what holds the plexiglass, I just used two by fours and I bought those also from Home Depot. At the time, that cost about $50. Though anyone knows about material costs these days, that might be in 2021, that might be more like $150 for the two by fours. Next up was fabric for the backdrop behind me and also behind the camera. So I just have some felt that I put up on the wall that neutralizes that background. So when I process it, you won't see anything behind me. Um, I got this from Joann's uh, and my wife gave me some coupons to save some money. This cost about $80 for all the fabric I needed for the studio. Next up is the polarized filter. This is, uh, was the greatest epiphany to me when I was creating this. I didn't have this for about the first year that I was making videos. And, and what was happening is there was a lot of artifacts in my videos, little things like whenever I would scratch or maybe not perfectly clean the, the light board, when I was doing a lecture, you would see these little dots all over. This radically changed it and made it a lot easier to shoot high quality videos. These are pretty dang cheap. You can find it at any photography outlet store or online. I got mine from B&H. And the first one I bought was about 20 bucks. And then I bought a newer one that I'm using now that was about $60, just because I thought it'd be much cooler. And it's not, it's about the same. Um, so this would be cost about 20 uh, for the cheaper and they get up to a hundred, but I would say don't spend more than the 60. Uh, I don't think it changes very much. So then the microphone, everything else on this list has to do with the visual presentation of the video. And what I found was once I got my visual good, I started getting really distracted, me personally, maybe a little OCD about the audio that wasn't very high quality. I first purchased a mini boom mic from Rode that just goes right on the camera. Um, and that improved over the camera's audio a little bit. Um, but then I actually bought um, from Amazon this little lav system. So I have this little system right here. It has a base unit that ho hooks up into the camera. Really simple to use. Um, these can be expensive also. The one I bought was about $140 and it works great. So there you have it for building of the studio, all of the structural stuff you need to have a Lightboard studio. And again, importantly, this is for a four by eight, which is a bit larger than some people do. Some people can really save money when they're doing this by building a little Lightboard on a desk. 
I needed the, the ability to move around as I was doing my lectures. This comes out to be about $800. Then these are small costs, but important for the work of uh, actually doing the lecturing and the demonstrations on the light board are what you write with. I use these Expo Neon markers. I've tried other markers um, that are a bit more expensive or some that are cheaper. I think these are the best. I use Expo when I'm writing on a whiteboard anyways, and they feel really comfortable. Also for cleaning, um, you need to be careful about what you use, not using something like Windex, which apparently can, can degrade the plexiglass. I just use this cleaner. It's called plastic cleaner that you can look for online. It's not too cheap and you don't need much of it to get the work done. And then microfiber towels. I bought a big pack of these and these are important just so you have something very soft that doesn't scratch your, your plexiglass as you're cleaning. On the last on the list of stuff to purchase are, are the resources to film and edit high quality video. Now this is where the cost can go from around $1,000, so that 800 we were just talking about, and it can really go far, up to $10,000 plus for full light board setups. All right, first on this list is the camera. And now this can vary a lot from using your smartphone or a camera that you have, a camcorder that you have at home to capture the video, up to a really expensive 4K camera. Um, I have two categories for this. First of all, if you want to just shoot HD, I think things like an iPhone or any other smartphone can do a pretty good job, especially if you already have it and you don't have the resources to spend the money. So for generally to shoot HD video, it could be from $0 for something you already have anyways, up to about you can buy nice used DSLRs online. I've seen for about $300. Then to shoot 4K video, and this is what I chose to do, is to create 4K videos. And the reason I did it was just because of the fact that I didn't want to spend hundreds of hours building the studio, making all of these videos, editing the videos, and then to look back in a few years and be like, oh man, that's really low quality. Now, I'm not sure that's what HD is going to feel like, but if you're like me, you've been through the world of VHS was here and then DVDs came out and you're like, well, this is, there's nothing better than this. This is way better than a VHS. This is perfect. And then you saw a Blu-ray for the first time and you're like, oh no, okay, this is way better than DVDs are, right? Like everything seems like it's the best until a few years go by with technology. Anyway, so I, I bought a 4K camera. I bought what's considered one of the better budget 4K mirrorless cameras. I use a Panasonic Lumix G85, but you could do any search for whatever year it is, 2021 best budget 4K camera. I spent $750 on my camera. Um, and again, just saying, uh, it's a bit of a, a big, big cost there, but I, I want these high quality videos and it felt good with what I was already spending on the studio. And this can go, uh, man, you can spend tens of thousands of dollars on different 4K cameras. Though for the kind of video you're shooting, it's important. You're not shooting like action sports or in different lighting. It's all controlled. I would always just go for a budget 4K camera in this situation. Now, importantly, the decision of doing HD versus 4K really impacts not just the camera, but also the computer you have. If you're just editing HD video, any newer computer that maybe you purchased in the last five years, even laptops, shouldn't have any problem editing them. And generally speaking, I would think if you went out and bought a camera, uh, a computer, and, and I think an average cost of a pretty good computer or laptop is about 650. Um, obviously, it can be way more than that if you buy the, the high end. But if you had a desktop computer and spent about $650 on the computer, this wouldn't include the monitor cost, which would add to this. I think for $650 or whatever, a base computer is that you buy from Best Buy or any other retailer will edit HD video just fine. Now to edit 4K video, you need a significantly stronger machine. Um, for me, I built my own and my cost just for the actual components um, for my computer came to be about $1,600. And again, this is in June, 2019, the costs fluctuate. The big cost that you're putting into this machine is it needs to have a strong processor a multi-threaded processor with as many cores as possible is important and useful for rendering video. You need a lot of RAM. So I think I currently have 64 gigabytes of RAM in my computer. And then finally, a really high quality video card, um, which those can actually fluctuate in price a lot. 
because um, the, the, the video card goes a long way, is a big part of the cost, but it goes a long way into helping you when you're working with it and making the computer act smoothly, even though it's processing 4K video. And then last on this list is the editing software. And again, this is a personal preference of mine. You absolutely don't have to spend the time doing this. But again, for me was, if I'm spending all the time, money, and resources on developing these videos, I want them to make them as clean as possible. And actually, I'm kind of a geek and like editing video a little bit. So this can range significantly. Um, Windows comes with Windows Movie Maker that you can edit these videos, though, a lot of the tools that I would want, like that we can change the coloring of the videos, isn't they don't have a robust system in those free programs. The one that's free that does a great job is DaVinci Resolve. And this is absolutely free. Importantly, DaVinci Resolve is used by professionals to create full-scale motion pictures. Um, I personally tried to use it. I really didn't like the setup and layout. It was slowing me down so much that I moved on to my choice of editing software, which is Adobe Premiere. And you can get an educational discount on Adobe Premiere or actually the Adobe Suite, which comes with like Photoshop, um, After Effects, and other Adobe products. Um, and that costs about $20 a month. And then if you're using the Apple operating system, one of the most popular editing softwares is Final Cut. And you can get Final Cut Pro for a one-time cost of $300. All right, then from this view, you can see the entire Lightboard setup for the most part um, in all its glory. I'll just walk through each of the things I did here. So obviously I built um, this, this stand out of two by fours, just kind of engineered it on the fly with the wood that I had, nothing too special there. Then I actually did this all by myself and I laid this frame down um, and then just screwed on this plexiglass. Plexiglass is pretty dang easy to work with. You can just drill through it. I've put about every um, foot and a half here, I've put little leg screws, probably well overbuilt when I put those in. And that's all uh, really straightforward and easy. One thing to say about the light board, if you had something like this, it is important to make it as sturdy as possible so you don't get a lot of shaking. In fact, I'm not sure if you can see, but I put a little bracket up on the side here um, where I've attached it to the wall just to keep that back and forth jiggling from happening too much. You'll also notice if you can see that the two by fours that come out um, on that side of the frame, that's to where I, I tacked up, I tack up a, a piece of fabric and lay that over the camera when I'm usually shooting. That takes away any of the glare that's coming reflecting off from the other side. That's really helps and makes the, a lot higher quality video. Then just with, uh, with LED strips, I just put these around the edges here with some packing tape. Um, by the way, one, one hint, at least for me, um, I've used a couple different LED strips. I think these ones that have come with a little remote where you can change the color is a big deal because um, I've found that there's different colors that end up making a better high quality video. Um, I forget exactly what setting here, but it's a little bit like white, but a uh, bluish white is, is what I found that works the best. Also, other tips, just when I'm, as I'm looking at it here, I put little tick marks on the, the whiteboard the light board here, so I know when I'm off camera. And so when I set up the camera every time I go to shoot, it's really important. You'd be so frustrated by the fact that when you look at your video afterwards and realize that you wrote off of the board here. So I have these tick marks that are just outside the frame on the bottom and the side so that as I'm going, I know when I'm in the frame. And then for lighting, I have the hair light up here. One thing to say about this, this is kind of important for the, the light board. And it's actually the reason I always wear my hat when I do these lectures. Well, I like wearing my hat too, but what you'll find, especially with dark hair, when you're shooting a video, when you do the processing, because you want to completely black out the background that will show up a little bit, a little bit of, of, of maneuvering with some color settings will black this out but it also makes your hair, if you have darker hair, kind of fade in the background and it looks kind of strange. I found that with a hair light and with a lighter colored hat, it, it, it makes, to me, it looks a little bit clearer and not so weird with a floating head or a head without hair. And then I have 
my two main lights here. This is the brighter of the lights. So this is called the, the key light right here. So this is giving the most of the brightness on, on the uh, presenter. And then this, the, the, the purpose of this one is just to fill in the shadows as much as possible. I actually haven't perfected all of that yet. I'm always tweaking them a little bit. Um, and I actually started with these lights on this side of the frame which many people who build these light boards do, but I found that that created some really strange shadows when the light was coming just from this way. It's a bit better when it comes um, through the glass. That's really the whole light board set up. The only other little hack I was, I was thinking about is I got a little uh, music stand here. I can't believe the Goodwill or, or Salvation Army or stuff like that have, uh, they have a lot of things that can be useful. Like for instance, for some reason, they always have a lot of tripods. And I bought a tripod, a cheap one online, I forget for like, like 50 bucks or something like that. And it broke a few weeks into using it. But then for like $5 from Goodwill, I got a rad tripod. And then this little music stand, which is probably came from a surplus from a school or something like that, right? This had to be just a couple of bucks. It's a big deal to have access to your notes and your markers and stuff like that quickly when you're lecturing. And then last thing to say, you can obviously scale this in any way that you want. And you can you can get more expensive or cheaper with the lighting or other things like that. Um, I have a four by eight piece of plexiglass because that's the standard size that they sold at Home Depot. And I thought that worked really well. It felt closer to the size of a normal whiteboard that I'm usually lecturing on. But I see people all the time that have these little desk sized pieces of uh, light boards that they set up that work just fine for them. Though I personally find that if I'm trying to do full lectures of big concepts, especially like in something like calculus, even this size of board is a little bit restricting. So some last thoughts. First and foremost, I hope you found this either useful for future planning or thinking about something like this, or at least entertaining if it was not useful. I think somebody could easily argue, isn't it kind of ridiculous to purchase and to build this kind of thing for the individual? And I may say, Yes, unless you're like me and kind of awkwardly enjoy having this kind of studio at your home and what it allows you to do. But I personally think, especially after what happened in 2020, and I thought this for years generally, specifically with higher education, but I can see it going down into the K-12 schools, is that there's, there will be a place for online or hybrid learning moving forward. And I could see schools or at least districts creating little studios like this to allow their instructors this kind of flexibility. Though the honest truth is, unless you have a lot of tech support, really doing something like this is a lot of work and has to be a bit of a passion project. And your significant other has to be really understanding for the things that you're going to purchase and the overall costs. Though if you're intrigued by this video and wanna have a conversation about this in any way or anytime in the future, my email is m-n-e-v-i-n-s at everettcc.edu. And uh, feel free to contact me. Outside of talking about math concepts, honestly, do, this kind of stuff, creating these online videos is another thing that I'm slightly obsessed with. And I would really appreciate any kind of conversation face-to-face -face or via Zoom.